Welcome to Stogie TV, the show that features the world of cigars. I'm your host, Kennedy. We're gonna be filming from the world famous Smoke Inn located in Boynton Beach, Florida. The featured cigar that we're gonna have this evening is going to be the pound for pound undisputed champ Perdermo 20th anniversary. So with that being said, grab a Perdermo, grab the lighters, and let's smoke. Welcome to StogieTV.com. I'm your host, Kennedy, and we're going to be filming this episode from one of the hottest cigar lounges in South Florida. Stay tuned. And when we come back, we're going to have more with the phenomenal Smoke In. that you have the correct humidity because humidity has a big influence on taste. There's certain age rooms for certain cigars. Uh, they're all different. They're all designed differently and have different humidity depending on the wrappers and the blends of the cigars. And too much humidity is as bad as, as a cigar being too dry. It has to be perfect. 
where cigar really comes together is during the marriage of the different leaves and it's during the aging process. If it's not the right humidity, the right temperature for aging, all your work has been lost. And now with Humidipack in every single box, we're guaranteed that each cigar will reach your home under proper conditions just as they leave our aging rooms. I can't imagine producing a great cigar without using Boveda products through the process and Humidipack inside our cigar boxes. It's an amazing product, I don't know anything like it. Not only that, it maintains constant humidity, where there's situations where humidity may raise, it will also remove the humidity. It's something that works, it's very simple, and I use it myself. Welcome back to Stogie TV, the show that features the world of cigars. Don't forget to follow all of our episodes on Instagram, social media, all at Stogie TV. We love to hear from you and tell us what you think about our shows. We want to get back inside of this phenomenal cigar lounge and bring you more. Uh, welcome back to Stogie TV. We're here with the owner, Abe, of Smoke Inn. And uh, Abe, well, thank you, first of all, for uh, allowing us into your shop. Sure. Uh, we're having a great time here at the Smoke Inn. This is one of the most beautiful shops we've seen. Um, man, thank you, thank you. Anytime. How, how, how are you feeling? Feeling great. Good, feeling good. great. Good, that's what Stogie TV is about. We I'm not in. dressed as nice as you, but I feel good. <laughs> We're here, we just want to relax and just have some fun. Um, I want to talk to you about some things and let our viewers know about some of the great things that you're doing here at the Smoke Inn. Sure. Um, let's talk about the radio show. Yeah. Kiss My Ash Radio. Talk to us, what, what is that about? Uh, honestly, it's, it's just a format and a venue to kind of entertain and, and, and uh, reach out to the cigar community out there. It's, it's, it's really more than just a cigar show. Um, it's kind of a lifestyle show. Um, we were approached by uh, Clear Channel a couple years ago who had some open time and they wanted me to do a radio show and I really wasn't interested. And um, a couple of my guys happened to work for Clear Channel before. So they kind of talked me into it. We started with a one hour show on Clear Channel and show kind of really took off, got popular, so we needed two more hours and we went to CV Radio, who now got acquired by JVC Broadcasting, and the show right now airs live on Saturdays here in South Florida and rebroadcast Saturday night in uh, New York. So we're in two cities right now, but you know, we're listening to all over the country. I mean, 75% of our callers who call in are from out of the state of Florida, and um, you know, we average about 18,000 downloads per episode on iTunes, so the show's doing very well, it's got great legs, and our goal is to hopefully be in two or three more markets before the end of this year. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Congratulations on thank that. You. And for our viewers who want to find out more information on how to listen and how sure. to download uh, Kiss My Ash Radio, what information do we have for Yeah, they just go to our website, www.kissmyashradio.com. You could listen live right from the website with any laptop or mobile device. Um, you could download any of the archived episodes. All our episodes are archived. And um, you get information on what's coming up, who's going to be on the show. Uh, we got, <laughs> I got my outline for tomorrow, and the guests are going to be on the show tomorrow morning, so we're getting ready for that. But um, it's, a, it's an entertaining show. I listen to some other people's shows, and as wonderful and as interesting as the cigar universe is, it's, it's very hard to keep people focused on talking about wrapper binder and filler for two hours. So we have a lot of extra special guests who come on and just talk about the various things of what guys who sit in a cigar shop will normally talk about Absolutely. throughout the coast, course of the day. Absolutely. So you know, we even got one segment that's become very popular. It's uh, sponsored by Spearmint Rhino uh, here in West Palm Beach. It's a segment called Are You Smarter Than a Stripper? Which has <laughs> really become really popular. Um, and they bring a stripper in from the club every, you know, not every, we do it like once a month, you know, once every three or four weeks. All right. They bring a stripper in, and we and our shows. What I like about our show too is it's not done in a closed room. We broadcast in front of a live audience. Nice. So we grab somebody from the audience member, and if they could beat the stripper, they win a special package courtesy. So of people can actually come here and watch the show take place. We do. We have usually anywhere from ten to fifteen, twenty people here on Saturday mornings just listening to the show live, smoking and drinking and talking. So it's pretty cool. Hey, you're a pioneer. You're you're um, absolutely enhancing the game. Never thought I'd be in the broadcasting universe. And just <laughs> and it's funny. My my younger brother actually studied and majored in broadcasting and interned at NBC, and that was his career. And he's you know, he's got a pizza that. place and a coffee shop and doing well in <laughs> Chicago, and I ends up having a radio show, so it's kind of ironic. Isn't that something? Yeah. Um, you are one of the most successful entrepreneur 
cigar yeah. lounge owners in the United States, if not the world. And uh, you contribute that to um, not only you as an individual and your business ethic, but you engage the community a lot. You just recently had your ninth yeah. annual Great Smoke. We were there. Yeah. We had a blast. Was that your first time? That was our first time yeah. there. Man, mind blowing. Ninth annual Great Smoke. Yeah. Uh, how did that start? It actually started at my 10th anniversary party. We gave away a Harley. And um, Mike Argeni, um, who used to work for Podomo and then started his own company, Burger and Argeni. And, um, he'd been in the industry for a long time and worked with Lou Rothman. He, he was at my 10th anniversary party, and to be honest with you, he, he kind of challenged me to come up with the Great Smoke idea. Um, we had a huge crowd. We had like six, 800 people yes. at our 10th anniversary party. This was in front of our West Palm store in our courtyard, right in front of the store. And wow. it was packed shoulder to shoulder, and he was just blown away by it all night. And we went out drinking and clubbing after the party, and he was just I'd never seen that outside of a JR store. It was amazing. Well, where do you go from that? And it was literally the next morning I was walking around my courtyard and I said to myself, I said, look, man, if I, if I take over this whole courtyard, <laughs> I mean, just basically, you know, eminent domain, just take it over, I could probably put about 30 different companies in here and I could do like a, a, a nice cigar event. And um, that's, how, that's how it was conceived. And, you know, I think we had 30 companies was our first one or 29, 30 yeah, companies was our first one. And um, you know, maybe 300 people in front of the little shop courtyard. The next year we did it again in front of the courtyard and they just outgrew it, became nice. shoulder to shoulder. Nice. So then nice. the shopping center really liked it because we bring a lot of people to the center. So they give us use of the whole like quadrant of their parking lot to the side of our retail store. Big area. And we basically shut that side down from uh, Friday morning till Sunday night. And uh, then it outgrew that. And last this past year when you came was actually the first time we did it at the American German Club, which was a new venue for us, which posed a lot of challenges, but it seemed to work out great, and I think we're very happy with that venue. Man, I was happy with it. Yeah, that it was, it was, was amazing, mind-blowing experience. Thank you, you had everybody from the industry here. You had um, visitors from all over. We had a chance to interview people from Jersey, from Cali, Miami. You, you hit all spectrums of the United States with that one. Well, that's one of the things with The Great Smoke. It really started out as a local event. And it's become a national event. I mean, we think we draw people from over 22, 24 different states. And there are people, honestly, I see once a year. I see them at the Great Smoke. Or wow. we have another annual poker tournament we just had a couple weeks ago, Smoking Series of Poker, which there are people I see once a year who come from out of state for our events. Because, you know, I, I, I think what separated us from local businesses or, or put us, at least my organization, on the map outside of, my well-trained staff, who I, I, I'm very lucky to have very good people working with me, is um, one thing is customer service. Absolutely. It, you know, I, I stress and I beat up on these guys that customer service is beyond anything else because, you know, people think I sell cigars for a living. I don't really sell cigars for a living. And nobody, nobody walks away from a smoking experience or coming to my shop. I mean, yeah, my humidors are bigger than the average size humidors and there's a lot of cigars in there, but nobody says... Wow, their, 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 their Padrones were great. It was better than the other guy's Padrones. It's the same Padron that's right. five blocks away. It's all about the experience. Absolutely. I'm selling experiences. I'm selling a, a, a journey, a lifestyle, a camaraderie. I'm, I'm giving these guys something to talk about, you know, and that's what they remember. You know, the cigars are part of the process, but 90% of what I sell is the same thing that everybody else has. So, you know, I'm, I'm really selling them memories and experiences from the moment they walk in the door to how they're greeted to annual events that we do or whatever it may be you know so you know i think that's the key thing that's been a key to our success absolutely um i walked in i took two steps i mean before, two steps and immediately hello hey how are you welcome to smoke in just wow yeah you're not allowed to make it to the humidor door if you do somebody did something wrong yeah, that's the rule <laughs> they failed for the day wow hey um, I, I thank you um for that because that's so important to the consumer the cigar lounge is where we go to feel like family it, 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 you know, it's, it's what I want when I go somewhere, you know, so I don't expect anything less, you know, it's customers first, you know, I, you know, everybody thinks, oh, it's my shop or it's our shop. It's not, it's the consumer's shop. You know, if the patrons don't come in, we don't have a shop. So at the end of the day, it's their <laughs> shop. So, you know, our job is to keep it in boundaries. Don't, you know, make, keep it enjoyable, you know, but, you know, it's their place at the end of the day. Yeah. And this is why you are extremely successful. Thank you. And I'll continue your great success. Thank you. Thank I'm you. pretty sure the consumers worldwide I can speak on behalf of 
and we all say thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so, sure. Abe, if you don't mind, you mind give us a tour of your shop in the humidor? No, I'd love to. All right, let's do I'm it. Very proud of it. Made this torch this puppy up. This is our latest micro blend that we just did with Drew Estate. It, um, it actually <laughs> uh, pre-sales started this week. I think we start shipping June first. Uh, we've wow. done we've done ten micro blends uh, so far to date with ten different manufacturers, starting with Pete Johnson of Tatuaje, hey, right. to Padron, to Fuente, to my father, uh, the Casada family, Eric Espinosa, Matt Booth. I don't know if I forgot anybody in between there. I hope I didn't. But um, our last latest installment was with Jonathan Drew, Pope of Greenwich Village. Nice. And um, you know pre-orders have been going through the roof. They come in ten pack bundles. We only made fifteen hundred bundles. They're going to be gone. And uh, the orders will start shipping uh, June first, so um, I'm trying to enjoy them while they're still around because I know they won't. Man. They won't last too long. They're not. They're gonna fly. No, no, they're gonna go. They're gonna fly. But yeah, I'd love to show you around. Let's do it. Absolutely. Hey, I noticed you have some pillows on the wall here. Godfather, Dirty J. Even towards the bottom, we have one that reads Bald List. Talk to us about this. Uh, we got a poker league that plays here okay. twice a week, and like I said, once again, everything about experiences. So um, we have actually a Vegas size professional poker table. It's actually mounted on this wall. Oh wow! That's, when they're done playing over there, they mount it up on here. So it's still here like a piece of art. <laughs> and these are guys who have earned their own cushions here. Look at this. Their seats. They can pull it off the wall. You can see most of them are pulled now. There's a couple guys who aren't here. Uh, That's they pull hot, it off man. the wall and they, they use it. So when they're sitting for two or three hours, their bum doesn't get too <laughs> bruised up. Their ego might get bruised. But I love it. Their bum doesn't. I love it. I love it. Hey. Only had to smoke in, right? Only had to smoke in. All right, we're inside of the walk-in humidor here at the Smoke In with Abe. Abe, this has to be one of the classiest walk-in humidors I've ever seen. Thank you. You have every brand from A to Z and then some. It's pretty fat. It, it really is. Uh, give us a breakdown of what we have here. I mean, it's pretty much you know everything that sells. If it doesn't sell, you know, we stop carrying it. I mean, uh, I tell people all the time, it's not a museum. It's, it's, a, it's a retail humidor. So, um, you know, we'll carry anything that a consumer comes in here and that we have a calling for. Um, you know, people like to say how many sticks they have, how many brands they have, and I think it's baloney. I mean, it's just too much to count. I mean, I can tell you dollar-wise, right. you know, <laughs> counting-wise, what inventory we have, but we have thousands and thousands of brands and sticks and, you know, stuff that just all over the place but we like to space it out make it look nice make it presentable to consumers let them find their product easy and we keep our shelves filled. I, mean, I see I mean and on top of that look at that it just keeps going all the way to the ceiling here this is like wow just wow you have every cigar possible well it's one thing I learned over the 12 years of being in this 12 sorry next year's 20 years next year's 20 years congratulations next year's our 20th anniversary in 12 locations um, space is important. This is this is the money room. The money room. I this, like that. This is the money room. I mean, you can sell liquor. You can sell a lot of stuff. This is, if you don't make your money in this room, you're not in the cigar business. I hear that. And uh, you know, this is this is what people come for. So um, we, we like to build big humidors and fill them up. I like that. Um, for the consumers and for our viewing pleasure, I know that cigar shops are unique because they have a particular cigar that's rare or a section of cigars that are rare. Could you give us your section in your humidor? You the vintage room. The vintage room. I want to see the vintage room. Right, we can, can we do it? Let's go check it out. All right, here we are in the vintage room at the Smoke Inn, uh, VIP access only, members uh, with, with granted permission. And Abe has been kind enough to allow Stogie TV to bring you um, this type of footage. And that's what, we're, that's what this show is all about, bringing you the best of the best uh, when it comes to cigar lounges and cigars. Abe, talk to me about this treasure chest that you have here well i mean first off this is not a vip room we, we let anybody who wants to come oh, in this room look at that yeah we let anybody who wants to come in this room we just have to escort them in nobody Absolutely. can just wander in this room so if anybody asks uh, a clerk or one of our tobacconists will enter escort you in here um and basically it's just it's stuff i've collected over the years i've obtained um through various sources and you know I'm looking at the shelf now. I don't come in here that often. I'm just looking. I'm missing a few spots. So I actually have stuff boxed. 
by years, um, they eventually will work their way in here. Wow. And every time somebody releases something limited, whether it's Davidoff or Pete Johnson or Padron or anything that's in, in rare quantities, we always take a stash of that and sure. we'll box it up and it's put away into storage until wow. four or five years when everybody's looking around and says, wow, I wish you could have that cigar again. And you can find it here, hopefully. This is truly amazing. I'm looking around. You have, for example, the Padron Millennium. Yep, from 15 years ago. From that 15 years ago. started shipping roughly uh, January 15 years ago. Wow. M may I hold one? Yeah, sure. We have a Padron Millennium from 15 years ago. This is truly um, an amazing um, situation here. Wow. Yeah, we actually had two of those boxes uh, when we opened, and that's down to an hour last Humidor full. There was, uh, I think, 100 cigars in each one. Uh, look at that. This is man, This is truly amazing. And above that, we have some Party Gus 150s from the original release. I believe it was 1995. Party um, 150, the original. Right yeah, I mean, because General Cigars re-released it, I think, or made some more down the road. This batch here was all from the first release they ever did. The original Party Gus 150s they were released, uh, I think it was 1995. Man, you have the original. My goodness. That's... What would we say the value of that thing is? Well, the cigars are roughly, I think, 150 to 200 bucks a cigar. But I have one book of the Don Ramon size, the big one. They only made a thousand of those books for the country. So um, I think that book of 10 cigars is roughly about, I think, 7,500 bucks or 8,000 bucks. You have number 354 added to 1,000. That's it. I still, you know, I haven't seen a book anywhere. So that's an original <laughs> book left. My goodness. And you have. Um, some rare. I got Drew Estates Acid Five. Acid Five from their fifth year anniversary from years years ago. Um, you know we have still some Rocky Patel fiftieth, which you know he made three four years ago. It's gone. Some old Davidoff products. Some Pete wow. Johnson Veritas from years ago. Wow. I have I think Camacho Liberties from two thousand and two. Wow. Uh, almost every box every year there. And then we have over here actually some pretty cool stuff. We have some clear Havanas. These are actually pre embargo. Cuban tobaccos were made here in the States. Pre embargo. Yeah. It, all the cigars that were here in the States made originally before the embargo were pretty much using Cuban tobacco. So these are all Cuban tobaccos before the embargo that were made here in the embargo that were made here in the States. I mean you can see boy tans two for fifteen cents. You know? Wow. And these are some pre embargo and specialty rums that you just can't find anywhere. Man, this is this is jaw dropping. Yeah. We have some cool stuff on the back wall that uh, manufacturers have made for us, especially for this room, one shot deals. Uh, we had a phenomenal blend that Pepin and Jaime, they had two, two sizes, each had made their own blend for us. And I'm not sure there's any left, but they're, they're pretty much running to the end of them. Wow. Um, I think that's all we have left from our original run there. It's the My Father Cigars Pepin Liga, number 5327. Yeah. Some original stuff they made for us for this room when we opened. But you know, we're constantly working with manufacturers to find cool stuff or have cool stuff that's made exclusively for this room. So this is truly stuff. a cigar experience. This yeah. is historic, man. This is there's some wow. old, old booze in here. There's an old <laughs> they got a box of Johnny Walker up there from 1930. You know, um, we also got some prohibition bottles of uh, bourbon. Whiskey and Rye up behind the bar. So. Oh yeah, we got to see that. Yeah, wow. we're actually going to do. I think we're going to do an event with Rocky uh, with his Prohibition cigar, where if they get so many, so much cigars, they'll get a free shot of actually real, true Prohibition whiskey. Oh man, you hear that? This is what happens here at the Smoke In: a true, classy environment, a true historic component of the cigar industry, and it is a must-do on your list. You must visit the Smoke In. Hey, thank you for yeah, allowing us in, in, into this, in. man. I'm, wow, I'm just blown away. Thank you. Let's see what else we have in the shop. All right, cool. All right. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Well, we've come to the end of our episode here at the world famous Smoke Inn. You've seen the vintage room, you've seen the walking humidor, you've seen the lounge, and you've seen the outdoor patio that we're sitting on right now. This place is waiting for you to come and visit and to come and enjoy. As always on Stogie TV, we like to bring you the best of the best, the loungers from all over the world. Located here in Boynton Beach, Florida, Smoke Inn is definitely one of those cigar loungers that you must put on your cigar list to do. I'm your host, Kennedy, and until next time, a cigar lounge near you. Smoke well.